This program is brought to you by Jizzy. Viraya Condor. Condor, prenez votre envol. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to this special coverage of the 15th edition of the BRICS Summit straight from Johannesburg. Today I'm very delighted to receive Mr. Clayson Moniela, who is Head of Public Diplomacy in South Africa. Mr. Moniela, thank you very much for being with us. Thank you so much for having me on your platform. Thank It's a you. Pleasure. The pleasure is shared. Mr. Moniela, let us start with uh, maybe an analysis of the work of the 15th Summit of the BRICS Group in light of all the global, economic and also geopolitical context. Well, look, this is uh, by far the biggest summit that the BRICS uh, formation has held uh, since it was formed. If you consider that we are going to be having over 50 heads of state Indeed, converging yes. in Santon, Johannesburg, South Africa, Uh, including the United Nations Secretary General, who's also confirmed to attend. Mm -hmm. And I think the reason why you've got such a big number of heads of state attending this summit, making it the biggest, is because the main issue uh, on the table is the possible expansion of BRICS. South Africa, by the way, yeah. supports the idea of the mm -hmm. expansion because we think that it's a moment that the BRICS family should not miss because if the leaders who are, by the way, meeting tonight do take a decision yeah. to admit new members, it will permanently change the geopolitical landscape. If you consider the current uh, membership of BRICS, the combined population and the combined GDP, which, by the way, has now surpassed that of the G7, yeah. if you add more members, Look at the caliber of some of the countries that are knocking on the door of BRICS, mm -hmm. Algeria, Saudi Arabia, UAE, mm -hmm. Indonesia, Bangladesh and others. If you bring some of these countries into the fold, look at what it does to the population size yeah. combined and the GDP. It makes BRICS a powerful force for the global south. Okay, Mr. Mangiello, but do you think it's a priority today? I mean, what are the priorities of the 15th edition of the BRICS Summit? Is it the expansion? adding more, more members, or is it a unified currency? And are these priorities uh, considered as the first steps into going to this unipolarity that they have been talking about? This recently? is the thing, this is the issue. Uh, uh, and by the way, the, the, the other priority that I think your viewers will be interested in is this whole issue around trading in our local currencies, yeah. which I know some media have misinterpreted to mean that the BRICS want to introduce a new currency. No. Mm -hmm. So the issue is not a new currency. Yeah. The discussion is around how do we trade amongst ourselves as BRICS countries utilizing our local currencies. This is already happening on a smaller scale. Uh, India and Russia are already trading using their local currencies. India alone has signed uh, a similar agreement with about 18 more countries to trade using local currencies. Yeah. So we want to encourage this amongst the BRICS countries. But secondly, President Ramaphosa has invited heads of state from the African continent uh, mm -hmm. to be part of the uh, retreat with the BRICS countries. The discussion there is also around how do we leverage on this idea yeah. of trading in local currencies to also give meaning mm -hmm. to the African continental free trade area, uh, serve as a catalyst to encourage intra-African trade as well as trade between the continent of Africa and the BRICS countries. So these are some of the priorities of our chairship in yeah. the context of uh, to give meaning uh, to reshaping uh, the balance uh, of uh, global powers uh, in geopolitics because we think BRICS is an important platform and voice for the global south. Okay, BRICS as a powerful uh group um, we're discussing or we often talk about the huge economic potential of the BRICS. i have some data here 42 of the world's population mm. 23 of the world's gdp and 80 of the volume of international trade exchange does this mean mr moniela that the BRICS has um you know has become a unique uh, economic pole in the world yeah it certainly cannot be ignored yeah. this is why each time the BRICS summits uh, gets underway the eyes of the global media are focused on whatever city where the BRICS countries are meeting because when BRICS speaks, the world takes notice. In terms of uh, uh, global economic uh, uh, figures, yeah. uh, the BRICS uh, formation has surpassed the G7. The G7 used to be uh, the biggest game in town. 
now the BRICS is that game in town, yeah. uh, which is a powerful force uh, also in terms of economic uh, uh, numbers and, and, and figures. And this is why it's significant the number of countries that mm -hmm. are lining up, that have yeah. now formally applied for membership, 23 countries the last time I checked, which mm -hmm. wants to come in. And this is why South Africa insists uh, yeah. that uh, the matter of uh, the expansion has to be strongly considered. It's a moment we shouldn't miss because, as I argue, it's going to permanently change the mm -hmm. geopolitical space. Already, BRICS is a powerful force, yeah. but with new members coming in, you can imagine what it does. And by the way, just to take the argument further, mm -hmm. if the discussion around the use of local currencies takes effect in the way that we think it should, it's going to change uh, the dynamics in terms of global trade because currently there's one currency that is dominant in That's terms me. of uh, yeah. global trade. Mm -hmm. So as more countries trade in their local currencies, that one currency significance lowers and then that changes the, uh, mm -hmm. the picture significantly. And you can imagine what it will do to that particular currency in that country yeah. and its influence globally in terms of trade. Mm -hmm. So. Uh, we agree that there, is, there are calls for abandoning the um, dollar, of course, and there are requests to join the BRICS, as you have mentioned. There are 23 uh, countries in particular. Do you think that the current context reinforce this proposal of new currency or even using the local currencies in trade? And that uh, even uh, the Brazilian uh, president expressed this will in uh, the last Paris summit. Do you think this will, will reinforce like really reinforce the will of the BRICS group? No, absolutely, absolutely. So, so this is not just a discussion that's taking place uh, among governments, as in uh, within uh, the BRICS leaders and the delegations of ministers, ministers of foreign affairs, ministers of trade, mm -hmm. uh, BRICS chairs and all. It's also taking place in the other institutions that have been created by BRICS. For example, within the context of the BRICS New Development Bank, mm -hmm. by the way, it's a big deal that the BRICS countries own a bank. Mm -hmm. uh, so that discussion is also taking place within uh, the New Development Bank uh, mm -hmm. uh, forums as well as the BRICS Business Council. Mm -hmm. Now this is where captains of industries from the five countries meet annually to talk about business deals, to exchange business cards, how do we increase trade volumes uh, between the, uh, the five countries, but also more importantly, as we conduct this trade, how do we do it? and the use of local That's, currencies becomes key yeah. as part of this broader discussion. I mean, I mean still, uh, with all these powerful components, uh, the dollar is still dominating the uh, global trade. So, uh, do you think it is still doable at this current time? Is it doable in this context? So, so the, 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 the discussion around the use of uh, local currencies should not be narrowly interpreted or seen as a way to compete with the dollar. That's not the intention. Um, as I said, in the context of the African Union, mm -hmm. of the African continent, the idea is to promote intra-African trade. The African continent trades with everyone else, with other regions, uh, but amongst ourselves, it's very low. A couple of years back, it was under 10%. I think it's gone up slightly, uh, but it's still uh, at a very uh, smaller scale. Mm -hmm. So we have to ramp up uh, intra-African trade and this is where the AFCTA comes in. It's created a framework uh, to serve as a catalyst uh, to encourage intra-African trade and if you do that using local currencies you can imagine the impact mm -hmm. on uh, individual economies of African countries on our regions broadly uh, and this is what will help in terms of also infrastructure development. Mm -hmm. um, How do you think it's going to be or is going to um, um, affect these global or these local countries? Is it going to help in the development of these countries? I mean, using the local, uh, local currencies Absolutely. in trade? Look, one of the things that we have to address, uh, particularly on the continent of Africa, uh, as, as, as a way to... Uh, boost intra-African trade. We've got to give attention to the issue of infrastructure development. We've got to give attention to easing the free movement of people and goods. That's what facilitates trades. Yeah. Now, if you do that using local currencies, you can imagine, because already now, if you're using other currencies, 40% of the cost 
of uh, trade goes to paying for logistics and the movements of those goods. Uh, so when you do that in your currencies, mm -hmm. you're already reducing those percentages and though, uh, that benefit uh, will be realized by the individual country that's doing that. Mm -hmm. So this discussion we think is absolutely critical and it's at the core of how to improve our economies and broadly the impact of doing that translates to the benefits of the peoples of our countries. Okay, this, these definitely seem as high hopes and high goals, uh, but still in the context, do you think that uh, the conditions experienced, especially after the global um, coronavirus pandemic, with the, also um, uh, the consequences of the uh, war in, uh, in Ukraine and the US sanctions against Russia, do you think all these conditions will help accelerate in the achievement of these goals that you have been talking about, of these objectives that are sought but by the uh, uh, BRICS group. Look, I mean, the uh, COVID-19 impact uh, on individual countries was massive. Uh, many countries are still um, recovering. Uh, mm -hmm. In fact, I think I should say all countries are still recovering yeah. from the impact of uh, COVID-19. We're fortunate in South Africa that the last statistics issued by Statistics South Africa show that we have now recovered as an economy, in fact, to pre-COVID levels. Mm -hmm. uh, and I think many countries are starting to emerge out of that. Uh, but there will be lingering effects mm -hmm. uh, of that. And of course, you talk about the impact of unilateral sanctions imposed on countries yes. like Russia. By the way, the BRICS uh, formation rejects mm -hmm. the idea of unilateral sanctions mm -hmm. uh, because they do have an impact on trade. Uh, there are certain uh, payment facilities that we can't access now if you want to trade with a country like Russia, given that it's under sanctions. Uh, we would recognize sanctions imposed by the United Nations, but unilateral sanctions are problematic. Uh, mm -hmm. as a matter of principle. Uh, but we do think that uh, some of the measures that have been put in place and these discussions, including the use of local currencies in trading amongst ourselves, help in circumventing the impact of some of these unil unilateral sanctions that have been imposed uh, mm -hmm. by certain countries. Let us assume that there will be new members joining the BRICS uh, very soon. How do you think uh, this joining and this acceptance will help these uh, new members, the new countries? Look, I made the point earlier that currently, if you look at the population size combined of the BRICS countries, it's massive, uh, over 40%. Mm -hmm. um, um, if you, of, of the global population, if you look at uh, the combined GDP size as well, which has uh, surpassed that of the G7, as I made the point, yeah. uh, if you bring in new members, because that's your question, Mm -hmm. uh, look at the caliber of countries that want to join in. Mm -hmm. uh, I can mention a few, uh, even Arab countries, mm -hmm. uh, your country being one, mm -hmm. um, Saudi Arabia, UAE and others. Mm -hmm. If you bring some of those countries in, it makes BRICS strong as it already is, even a bigger force, mm -hmm. um, speaking on behalf of the Global South, and will certainly permanently alter uh, the geopolitical landscape. So it's an important question that the leaders have to discuss tonight. Uh, what helps is that there is a criteria that has been set, mm -hmm. which has been uh, discussed by the BRICS shepherds, the foreign ministers. So it will now be tabled before the five leaders who are having a retreat tonight mm -hmm. for a final decision. But mm -hmm. we do think uh, as South Africa that it's an important decision that must be taken. We certainly support mm -hmm. the idea of the expansion. Mm -hmm. And some countries uh, who have showed interest to join the BRICS are also members in other groups. Uh, let's take the example of the G20. Yeah. Why, do you, why do you think that these countries want to join the BRICS? I mean, what's the purpose? BRICS is a force, um, uh, particularly for the Global South. Um, uh, and what is common, by the way, this is an interesting issue, the five BRICS countries are mm -hmm. also members of the G20. Um, and, and by the way, South Africa will be taking over the chairship or the presidency of the G20 mm -hmm. in two years' time, 2025. So we'll mm -hmm. be hosting the G20 in South Africa. 
and uh, two of I them are also members of the Security Council of the United uh, Nations. True that. Mm -hmm. yeah. That's another issue, by the way, that we are discussing, yeah. the reform of global institutions of mm -hmm. governance, including the United Nations Security Council, mm -hmm. which is a premier organ of the UN, uh, charged with uh, international peace and security and maintenance thereof. Uh, so, so those reforms mm -hmm. must happen and must happen now. The world is no longer the same way when it was, when it was configured uh, back then. It has mm -hmm. changed. And the idea that you don't have Africa represented uh, uh, in the permanent category of the UN Security Council is something that uh, uh, does not sit well with the African continent. Mm -hmm. So we do think that the reforms must happen. Um, so yes, uh, uh, it's interesting that these countries are in the G20 and this discussion. So after we have them in the BRICS, uh, they extend uh, to the G20 mm. and uh, we keep agitating for these changes and these reforms mm -hmm. uh, of these institutions of global governance, including the Britain Woods institutions as well. Good. Okay, Mr. Maniela, you have mentioned um, an important sentence, the word has changed. And um, there is an increase in interest from the West uh, to the BRICS. I mean, even a great media focus on the summit these days. How can this interest uh, be explained. Do you think that the West is really concerned by the BRICS? Oh, of course they are. Uh, I mean, uh, we've discussed uh, several issues that if I was uh, sitting in one of the capitals in the West, it would give me sleepless nights. Mm -hmm. So, for example, if the BRICS countries uh, give meaning, practical meaning to the idea of Objectives, trading yeah. with local currencies amongst mm -hmm. ourselves, um, it is not meant to, you know, compete with the other currency, but by, by design, if you do that, it means you're no longer going to be using the other currency. Of course, mm -hmm. you will not completely discard it. Mm -hmm. You will use it here and there, but the more you use your local currency, it will have an impact on the other currency. So I think this is why some of them are worried mm -hmm. um, and, and concerned about the discussions within BRICS and the impact those decisions will have on the current setup and how it will alter uh, matters of global trade, including maybe, maybe not just concerned about the, um, um, the the trade with local currencies, but also the creation and also um, issuing a new expansion, of course, but issuing also a new currency. I mean, a unified currency between all the countries. Um, but this, uh, I mean, I'm talking about the issuing of this new currency has to go through many stages. Um, do the countries of the group have enough um, components, maybe, to achieve? this uh, specific goal and launch this monetary coordination between all the members of the group? So, so there is no issue around, there is no discussion mm -hmm. regarding a new currency. Mm -hmm. so, so that's not on the agenda. Mm -hmm. they, 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 they for now they're only discussing yeah, trading now, in local currencies, our currencies but it's still that an objective for the, for it the is. group. The, 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 the use of local currencies. Mm -hmm. uh, so for now the, the issue of a new unified currency is not on the table. We've got to get this one right mm -hmm. of trading using our local currencies. Local currencies. As it's already happening, as I said, yeah. Russia, India is an mm -hmm. example. They're all India already itself working with the with other it. 18 countries that they're already doing this. So mm -hmm. it can be done. It has mm -hmm. uh, been shown that it's possible. Uh, mm -hmm. So we want to do this more and more amongst ourselves, mm -hmm. including with the African continent. Mm -hmm. Okay, as a last question, when we talk about uh, regional blocks, Mr. Maniela, we necessarily talk about the motives that bind these countries together. What does um, bring uh, the countries of the BRICS together? I mean, is it the past? Is it the present? Or is it the hope for a more balanced, for a more uh, unified maybe and just word? Multipolar. Uh, so the BRICS countries share same values, mm -hmm. uh, same interests, uh, in certain cases, uh, same history. Mm -hmm. um, we are part of the global south, um, same objectives in terms of what we, we, we see um, uh, going forward. So this is what has brought us together. And of course, uh, the idea that uh, individually we've got very strong emerging economies. Um, and uh, so we've been brought together under that umbrella. But mm -hmm. at the core of it is that we share the same values. Mm -hmm. uh, and this is why even with the discussion around possible expansion, it was important to develop a criteria so that you don't bring in members that don't share 
uh, your mm -hmm. values uh, and don't have a common uh, interest with the BRICS family. Otherwise, you alter the complexion and the identity and the agenda mm -hmm. of BRICS. Uh, so this will continue. It has to be preserved because it's an important part of what makes up uh, the BRICS family. Shared values, shared interests, shared objectives. But this is maybe the issue for, uh, for now. I mean, this is what people have been asking about. Are there uh, unified or identified, let's say, criteria for these new members who yeah. want to join the BRICS? Yeah, the, the, that has been discussed. Mm -hmm. It was uh, processed by the BRICS Shepherds, which is uh, senior officials uh, mm -hmm. level. Uh, this was presented before the BRICS foreign ministers. Remember the foreign ministers met here in South Africa in Cape Town mm -hmm. uh, a while back and uh, there was a recent meeting as well. Now that the foreign ministers have also discussed this criteria, it's going to be tabled mm -hmm. before the BRICS leaders who are meeting tonight as mm -hmm. we speak mm -hmm. uh, as part of their retreat mm -hmm. uh, to then take final decisions on this matter of expansion. Do you think a final decision will be identified we or issued know. by the end of the 15th before summit? This summit ends we will know what the decision mm -hmm. is on mm -hmm. this subject mm -hmm. it's the most topical issue they've got to take a decision so mm -hmm. that we we know what the way forward is we will be following that thank you very much mr maniola for being with us today much appreciated dear viewers we get to the end of this special coverage thank you very much for watching and goodbye <laughs>